And welcome back. The uh, article here, this is uh, uh, reprint over Common Dreams, but scientists are expressing alarm over utterly terrifying new findings from NASA. Their phrase, the scientist's phrase, utterly terrifying. And the European Space Agency that Antarctica has lost about 3 trillion tons of ice since 1992. And in the past five years, as the atmospheric and ocean temperatures have continued to climb amid ongoing reliance on fossil fuels, ice losses have tripled. Alan Shepard at the University of Leeds, uh, you know, tweeting, just freaking out. These events of sea level rise, they've triggered are an indicator of climate change and should be a concern for the government, the governments we trust to protect us. Uh, this is published in Nature. NASA's Eric Ivins says, this is the most robust study of the ice mass balance of Antarctica to date. We could not, up until 2012, he said, we could not detect any acceleration. But after that, based on survey by satellites, we saw a threefold increase in the rate of ice melt. What the heck is going on here? Let's check in with Dr. Michael Mann. He is a professor of meteorology and the director of the Earth Systems Science Center at Penn State University, author of several books, including The Madhouse Effect, How Climate Change Denial is Threatening Our Planet, Destroying Our Politics and Driving Us Crazy. His website, Michael Mann, with two ends at the end, net. And you can tweet him at Michael E. Mann. Uh, Dr. Mann, welcome back to the program. Uh, thanks, Tom. Always good to be with you. A uh, uh, very quick note. Um, the paperback edition of The Madhouse Effect just went live today. Um, hey, it's, hey. it's for sale now. That's great. And we had to update the book because it was originally written before the last presidential election. So you might imagine we had some updating to, to do. And we added a whole chapter uh, that um, is entitled uh, Return to the Madhouse, Climate Denial in the Age of Trump. Amazing. Amazing. So uh, I'm, I'm curious your thoughts on what I read to to open this this segment that uh, it, it look this guy. Uh, uh, let's see, who was this? Mr. Shepard. Explain Shepard. I'd have to dig back into the oh, he, he, University of Leeds professor Andrew Shepard. He said up until 2012, we could not de de detect any acceleration in the ice melt in Antarctica. But after 2012, we saw a threefold increase at the rate of ice melt. Are we hitting a tipping point? Or have we? Well, there are many different possible tipping points, and some of them we've certainly already hit. Um, this is actually a theme that we explore in the book because it's an example of how uncertainty is not our friend. If anything, the changes in climate that are taking place today are unfolding faster than we predicted. The magnitude of the changes is greater than we predicted. So yes, there's uncertainty. There's always scientific uncertainty, but it has worked against us. As we have uh, reduced the uncertainties, we've learned that things uh, are happening even faster. And there's no greater example of that than what is happening with the ice today, with the West Antarctic ice sheet. There's a confluence of evidence that's now coming together. Uh, a couple of years ago, there was a study that demonstrated that when you put some of the physics that was missing in the climate models into the climate models, the West Antarctic ice sheet can disappear far more quickly than the models used to say it could. Uh, and so those scientists were saying we could see a lot more loss of West Antarctic ice over the next several decades. We could see twice as much loss of ice and twice as much sea level rise by the end of the century. And in the time since that study was published a couple years ago, there are all these other studies that were just published in Nature that now point to the fact that the observations are telling us that we are seeing that acceleration. We are seeing that uh, greater loss of uh, ice that the theoretical models predicted we would see. So the evidence from the models and the observations are coming together uh, in, um, in a way that is quite uh, concerning, uh, in a way that suggests that, indeed, we have to double those sea level rise estimates. So if you had asked me, and I think you did, I think we've, we probably talked about uh, sea level rise maybe three or four years ago, and I would have told you that the maximum sea level rise we could see by the end of the century globally was about three feet. Now, that was the consensus at that time. Just in a few years, the consensus has now doubled. We have to tell you now that we could see six to eight feet of sea level rise by the end of the century. And we've already seen what just one foot can do. Yeah. We and saw that in Superstorm Sandy, for example. I have a, a newborn grandson who is probably going to be alive at the end of the century. 
And uh, at that point in time, New York is gone, Florida's gone. Is that what you're saying? Well, we cannot rule out a scenario now by the end of the century if we don't act. So the future is in our hands to some extent. We can act. Uh, we can you know, uh, meet our obligations under the Paris Accord. We can ratchet up those commitments in the next major uh, climate conference in a couple of years. And we can see a path towards stabilizing warming below a, a, a truly disastrous level of about three and a half Fahrenheit, two degrees Celsius warming of the planet. On the other hand, if we don't take action, if we continue to follow business as usual with our burning of fossil fuels, by the end of the century, we could see six to eight feet of sea level rise. That means the loss of the lower third of Florida. That means Miami Beach is gone, uh, New York City. Um, you're talking about a, a retreat away from the coastlines, a retreat from some of the world's largest cities, a relocation of tens of millions of people. Um, and that, of course, is a recipe for unrest and uh, all sorts of uh, national security ramifications. We're already seeing uh, environmental refugees. I was just in Italy uh, last week um, where uh, they're turning away uh, refugees from Africa. We're already seeing people flee these lands uh, that are no longer livable. Um, if we get six to eight feet of sea level rise and we displace you know, potentially 100 million people on the face of the planet, uh, that's a recipe for a disaster. Yeah. Uh, and and how, do we, uh, how do we add to this equation the damage that's being done to species around the world? The, the, uh, this, the you know, uh, Elizabeth Colbert's uh, the sixth extinction. That's right. Um, you know, there have been uh, geological extinctions event, uh, is geological extinction events in the past. There have been five of them um, over the course of Earth's history. Well, there's a sixth that's taking place right now. And the difference is this one we are causing. This one was avoidable. Um, and we are talking about a trajectory that, again, if we don't act on this problem, uh, we lose, you know, maybe 25% or more of the world's species. Um, that would have a de devastating impact on ecosystems, on us, because after all, we are in a sense at the top of the food chain. And if the, the you know, ecosystems collapse beneath us, then that calls into question, you know, the extent to which uh, human civilization can uh, exist in anything like its current form. The loss of civilization seems like a pretty serious issue. In the, in the minute or so we have left, uh, I'm, I'm curious your thoughts uh, on what we should be attending to right now. What should we be paying attention to with regard to climate change? Well, I'll, I'll tell you what we have to do. As I said, we have to ratchet up those commitments. Um, and we've got a president who wants to back out of our commitments. He wants to leave Paris, which would make us an international pariah, the only country in the world. Um, if we want to change course, if we want a federal government, an executive branch and a Congress that is going to join the rest of the world in solving this problem rather than acting on behalf of their fossil fuel industry funders and sacrificing the planet um, as a result, uh, we need to make our voices heard. Uh, you are doing that with your shows. Um, there are so many ways that we can do that. But, of course, we can do that at the voting booth. We have to elect politicians who will reflect our interests rather than the special interests who too often fund their campaigns. So very well said, Dr. Michael Mann. MichaelMann.net. Uh, you can tweet him at uh, Michael E. Mann. Dr. Mann, thank you so much for being with us. But thank you, Tom. Always a pleasure. Great talking with you. And the new, uh, new, newly out in paperback, The Madhouse Effect, How Climate Change Denial is Threatening Our Planet, Destroying Our Politics, and Driving Us Crazy by Dr. Michael Mann. We'll be back.